Yes, it's good to be in awe of God. Reverence will keep you from doing evil. Reverence will keep you from habitual sin. Thank you, Lord, for the people of God. For those that have your Bible, please turn with me to a, a familiar book that many of us can identify with. That book is Job. Book of Job, the 42nd chapter. Starting at verse 1, when you have it, please say amen and stand to your feet out of reverence for the king and his word. Tequila, I thank God for your healing. I thank God, woman of God, that you're still a walking testimony of the goodness of the Lord. You know, I posted on Facebook the other day that you can measure the strength of a man or the value of a man by how hard he pressed through life. We as a people of God got to learn how to press our way through life. We got to quit being so easily picked off behind trials and situations and circumstances and distractions and so forth, my God. You measure the value and the strength of a man by how hard he pressed through. Do you got to press on the inside of you? Oh, my God, can you keep on pushing? Can you take a licking and keep on ticking? Uh. Oh, my God. Uh. Though he slay you, that will you still trust in him? Though he tell you no, will you still pick up your Bible and call on his name? Mm. Mm. Job 42.1, when you have it, say amen. The word of God reading from the New Living Translation. I know that you can do anything, Job said in verse 2. And no one can stop you. See, you have to get that revelation right there. Let me say that again. Starting in verse 2, even though I mentioned verse 1, Job replied to the Lord, but verse 2 says, I know that you can do any, see, you got to believe that he can do anything. And no one can stop you. See, that's a mindset. Verse 3 says, you ask, who is this, that question, this is God, my wisdom with such arrogance. Ignorance, arrogance, and ignorance. It is I. And I was talking about things, Job said, I knew nothing about. Things too far, things too wonderful for me. You said, listen, and I will speak. I have some questions for you. God, oh, Lord, have mercy. You must answer them. I, I, I had only heard, Job said, about you before. But now I have seen you with my own eyes. I take back everything I said. And I sit in dust and ashes to show my repentance. After the Lord had finished speaking to Job, the word of God says to the, 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 the Tendermite, I am angry with you and your two friends, for you have not spoken accurately about me as my servant Job has. So take seven bulls and seven rams and go to my servant Job and offer a burnt offering for yourselves. God reversed the curse. He says my servant Job will pray for you and I will accept, my God, his prayer on his behalf. I on your behalf. I'm going to say that right there. Because we know Job has suffered. But he's now at the end of his life and God has reversed the curse. And, and now they came to comfort him. And now God said, okay, y'all had an order. Let me bring it up so I can understand. Uh, get a sacrifice. He never come before the king any kind of way. Never come from a king without a sacrifice. And so y'all are out of order. So the very man that you, the very man that you came to comfort, God switched and now he said y'all three go get an offering go get a sacrifice because he's supposed to pray for you because you thought you had it right but you actually had it wrong uh, you thought sin my God caused this suffering 
You didn't see my hand. Some of you don't see God's hand. Uh, you, you can't see the inner workings of the Spirit of God working this thing out. Oh my God, to the conformity of His will. And so you're casting judgment. You're judging stuff before it's time. My God, so, 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 uh, Henry, go get an offering for Francetta. She's going to pray for you. The very person that you counted out is the very person God going to use to pray. I'm going to stop reading right there because I feel like teaching. Father, I thank you. Thank you, Lord, for that revelation that wasn't in my notes, but thank you that you switched. Oh, my God, thank you that you turned it around. And as I prophesy and as I move into teaching, I decree and declare that the second half of their lives that standing under the sound of my voice, Father God, will be better than the first half. I thank you that we are already richly blessed according to their constitution and we receive our inheritance in the name of Jesus. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Come on and say amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I feel good, y'all. Yes, Lord, I got my help sitting in front of me. I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. Mm. Yes, Lord, do you ever just want more? Now, y'all be ready. Get your notes out. Uh, get your pen and paper out. We're going to talk a little bit. Thank you, woman of God, for praying your husband through this one. Do you ever just want more? Is that anybody? Let me see your hands. Let me see your hands. Okay, okay, okay. We live in a society that thrives, church, on more. People everywhere are after more money, after more stuff, and after more power. Evaluate yourself on that. Don't just let them be words. Are you after more money? We can all use some more cheese. Let me make it uh, let me come your way. Uh, we can use some more money. Do I got a witness? Yeah. And we can use a little bit more power. Do I got a witness? Yeah. And we don't need no more stuff. Y'all missed that. I gave y'all a blessing for money and power, but I said y'all don't need no more stuff. <laughs> we got too much stuff. Lord, I'm going I'm going to leave that alone. Somebody give God a hand for me right quick. <laughs> Amen. From the billionaire who wants more money to the politician who wants more power, church, everybody wants more. While the people who live in this world all want more of the world's stuff, there seem to be very few people who, who are after more spiritually. In verse 12, it tells us, according to the Constitution. So the Lord blessed Job in his second half of his life even more than in the beginning. I want to prophesy to you that God is setting some of you up to be blessed more in the second half. And as I was telling my son, Pastor Tedrick in the back, my God, we are both going through a crushing. He has to crush you. He has to crush you, my God, to make you. He have to crush you, my God, to prepare you for where he's taking you in the mantle that's on your life. Oh, my God. We can clap about being blessed in the second half, but there's a process. It's called steps. Steps leads to process, Sharon. Everybody got a process, my God. Everybody got steps that they got to take. Everybody got a cross that they got to bear, my God. If you want to receive, my God, the full manifestation and the blessing in the second half, my God, you got to stay equipped, my God, and you got to keep walking on the first half. You got to go through whatever you got to go through, my God, to receive the inheritance of more in your life. Come on, somebody. Webster defined the word more as being in greater quantity, a greater amount, Webster, a greater degree or number. The Lord worked in Job's life to give him more at the end of his life than at the beginning of his life. So I'm going to entitle this sermon, I need more. Not just money. Not just power. Not just stuff. Spiritual. Y'all know where I was going. So, Father God, I thank you for the few minutes. Teach. Let your kingdom come. Thank you that you don't have to beg you to move when a person is in right standing. In submission to your king, don't. So, Lord, I thank you that your people will receive impartation that would help them move closer and deeper and more intimately with you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
So put point number one on the screen. I'm going to move forward. My God, but look at your neighbor and say, I need more. Look at them again and say, I need more. Uh, now, there is some that need more things naturally, but I want to talk to us on a spiritual sense, though. Are y'all with me so far? Those who get, my God, those who get more walk a special path. Yeah? God doesn't just give his more to everyone. I'm a sailor right there. Oh, my God. See, we, we can cry about it. Uh, we can f even somewhat fast. Uh, don't you know people that's unsaved fast? So because you fast, they don't make you spiritual. Okay, are you with me? So, 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 but people that receive more from the king tend to walk a certain way. Are you with me so far? Everybody wants more, but everybody don't get more. See what I'm trying to say? And so as I taught us before, and, and we'll say redundantly, my God, you determine how blessed you're going to be by God. God don't determine that. You and I determine that. Oh, my God. Uh, Shemaine, you and I determine how much more we're going to receive from God. By how we walk. Yeah. Oh my God, I'm a teacher, please. Yeah. And I'm not planning on finishing. You determine. Not God. Just like God don't send nobody to hell. Our choice is sinners there. Yeah. Yeah. See what I say? You determine. Just like some of us is dealing with sickness that God never intended for us to deal with because we won't eat right. We won't exercise. We won't cut out them cookies and them cakes and all of those stuff. And see, 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 you determine the quality of life that you get to live under heaven on earth. That's why I says be a good steward over your life. That ain't just with your money. So a lot of us is not living a, a quality life because we're not making quality decisions. As I taught y'all before, decisions, my God, my God leads to destiny. Everybody has a destination. Everybody has a destiny, my God, that we should be on, my God. But some of us disqualify ourselves because, my God, we want more for the wrong reasons. We want more stuff for the wrong reason. We want more power for the wrong reason. We even want more money for the wrong reasons. And so God will let you have some money, but the Bible says money in a fool's hands will make it as wings. That's why you see people get it and then lose it. And then he'll give it back to them and then take it again. But sooner or later, you might not never get it back. Because God is more concerned about your soul than he is about your pocketbook. And so this pastor is more concerned about your soul than he is about your attendance. Look at your name and say, I need more. It's only two ways. That was last Wednesday. Look online. It's only two ways. One going to give you more and one going to take from you. The straight and narrow going to give you more, but the broad way going to take from you. A lot of us have lost a lot of things, my God, out there on that broad road. We got a lot of pain and scar. We lost mm, a lot of stuff, my God. So up under point number one, write this down. Let's look at the pathway. Remember we talking about the person that walks a straight path receives more. Are y'all with me so far? So a pathway to holiness. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Y'all knew I had to pull it somewhere, didn't you? Only those who live clean lives qualify for more. According to 2 Corinthians chapter 6, 14 through 16, it says, don't team up. Paul is talking to the church, Christians, in Corinthians. Don't team up. Think about when you team up. That means you're on the team. I got your back, you got mine. Will you go, I go. What you do, I do. Usually what you say, I say. I'm going somewhere, I promise you. What are you teamed up with? Who are you teamed up with? Where are you teamed up with? Don't team up with those who are unbelievers. How can righteousness be a partner with wickedness? How can light live with darkness? What harmony can there be between Christ and the devil? Boy, Paul is teaching. How can a believer be a partner with an unbeliever? And what union can there be between God's temple and idols? For we are the temple of the living God. And God said, I will live in them and walk among them. I will be their God and they will be my people. In the Old Testament, God only worked through the priests and somewhat of the prophets. But in the New Testament, Christ said, I come to live inside 
my people. They don't have to go to a Pacific temple or a Pacific place where the ark or the presence of the Lord is. My God, now I'm living on the inside. So wherever they go, I go. So that's why God says we're two or three touch and agree. He says we're, 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 we're two or three out there. My God, there I am in the Miss. So, so, so what you got to understand is God is warning us through Paul, my God, not to team up with, not to partner with, not to live, my God, with people that's ungodly. And don't be religious and take it out of context. Well, because we all, my God, have to deal with unsaved people who don't know Christ. I understand coming in contact with people, my God, to let Christ's light shine, oh my God, through us to be able to help them. But look at the scripture that says harmony, union, live. Harmony, union, live, partner with. See, you got to be careful who you do business with, to all my business owners. Yeah. See, I, say, I know they got the cheese to fund your, pro- your, your business, but did God tell you to partner with them? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my God, did God tell you to join your business, my God, because something that bless you on the front end and curse you on the back end. Yeah. Oh, it blessed you on the front end. They blessed you and broke you up, my God, but now you're cursed in the end. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, we talking about how God blessed the end of his life. Oh, my God, but God warns us through Corinthians, my God, not to partner with, not to join with, not to live with. Because everywhere you go, God goes. Who you join with, you're joining the Spirit with. Oh, my God, so we have a mandate, and God's going to judge you and I. That's right, judge you and I, my God, on what we do with this physical temple. See what I say? So you, you, you say you need more. God stands ready to give you more, but there's qualifications. There's standards. There's prerequisites. To get more. I'm going somewhere. And so therefore, we got to be careful. As Paul was talking to the church in Corinthians to keep things in contact, he said, my God, be careful who you join with. Be careful who you partner with. Be careful who you live with. But he's talking to Christians. Paul said you and I would have to leave this world in order to get away from unbelievers. We understand it. That's not what he's saying. See what I'm trying to say? But when it comes time to live with, join with, be in union with, he says be careful. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians, write this down, 15, chapter 15, verse 33. Be not misled or be not deceived. Bad company corrupts good habits. See, God said even in the Old Testament, my God, God was going to make a distinction from his people and the other people. He's going to separate the common from the uncommon, the clean from the unclean, the righteous from the unrighteous. My God, God is always doing a distinction. Our God is always allowing the Spirit to do a separation. Because when God is trying to bless you, my God, he got to first separate you. Oh, Abraham, leave thy people and go. I'm going to bless. Look up, my God. Look up, Abraham. I'm going to bless you. So shall your offspring be, my God. But in order for me to do this, you're going to have to leave the familiar. You're going to have to separate from the people, places, and things, baby. Because I want to bless you, my God, but I can't bless you, my God. So you till you leave. That's why God said you got to quit joining with, quit being connected to. God wants to give you more, naturally and spiritually. See what I'm trying to say? But, 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 but you got to separate. You got to leave. So as I move, what are you joined with at 115 when we get ready to shift, shift up out of here? What, 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 when we get ready to leave up out of here, what, what you going to go join with? Where are you going to go next Friday? Everybody say, I want more, and I need more. But will you walk that clean path? As I've taught y'all, write this down for those that hadn't heard me say it, but you've been hear me say it now. You choose the choice, but you don't dictate the consequences. You can make your choice. God going to honor your choice, but you don't get to tell God what the consequences are going to be. I'm grown. I can do what I want to do. Yeah? God said, yes, you can. You can go where you want to go. You can do everything you want to do. But you ain't finna tell me what type of consequences to give you. Are they with me so far? And so, my God, a pathway to more is, my God, it has, my God, a mandate on us to begin to allow God to clean up our lives. My God, because the more cleaner you are, the more God can trust you with more. See, God is trying to crush you and I and clean you and I so he can give you your ministry. So he can reveal to you your assignment. Yeah. See, 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 that's why he's trying to clean us up. 
because he's trying to reveal to us our purpose. Because right now, we can't see. <laughs> right now, all we see is pain. All we see is trouble. All we see is disappointment. All we see, my God, is through a broken mirror, broken glass, my God. All we hear and see, my God, is the images, my God, that our mamas and grandmas and different people have spoken into our life. And see, God, uh, he's trying to clean you up. And I was telling my God, somebody, my God, when people seem as hard, say it's hard, it's truth. Mm. Uh-huh. And then you put the passion with the truth, my God, it's going to come off hard. Mm. But we don't know, but, but we always say, man, that's a hard way. The, what did the disciples say? That's a hard saying, what Jesus said. And the Bible said they talked away and left him. Jesus was speaking the truth, mm. passionately, pastoral. Mm. And they still said, this is a hard saying, mm. and they left him. Mm-hmm. So you take my passion out of it, and I speak truth, they still going to leave. They did Jesus like that. They left me, so what makes you think they ain't going to leave you? Uh-huh. They persecuted me, what makes you think they ain't going to persecute you? They deserted me, what makes you think they ain't going to desert you? Yeah, yeah. I spoke to them in pastoral. Truth. Humble. This is too hard. And they left. But not understanding God is trying to clean for the purpose of revealing. God is trying to get us to uncover so we can recover. The pathway to, to more is striving, keyword striving. Holiness still matters. Write that down, write that down. You need to put that all over your house, on your car, put it in, oh, write it on the back window. My God, get a sticker and say holiness still matters. Because it does. Watch this, let me help you with this. Holiness don't mean I don't make no mistake. Let me tell you what holiness is. Holiness means... Amen, Pastor Melvin. Hey, Melvin, boy, I love Melvin. He'll be there tomorrow night going hard with us too, my God. Holiness is the state of mind. Set your mind, set your affections on things above. Holiness don't mean you don't make no mistakes. Holiness don't mean you don't listen to Will Wayne every now and then. Holiness, come on. Holiness. See what you see what you got to understand is holiness ain't got nothing to do with you. It got everything to do with God. We serve a holy God. God makes you holy. You can't make yourself holy. I can't make myself holy. God makes you holy. And see, what you got to understand is you can never become holy if you're trying to do it by yourself. Cursed is the man that trusts in the arm of flesh. My God, that's why God said, work out your soul's salvation. God gives you and I the strength to make decisions, but it's God, my God, who makes you holy. It's God who sanctifies your soul. It's God who heals your life. Not you, not me, God. Holiness has everything to do with God because he's a holy God. Moses, Moses, take your shoes off. Holy. Paul, Paul, why is you persecuting me? He came in contact with a holy God. As I told you, there's no way you can meet a holy God and stay the same. Something going to change or something going to die. Oh, you can't go, ah, oh my God, ah, when you come in the presence of a holy God, you see how unholy you are. When you come in the presence of a holy God, you and I see how unholy and unworthy we are. And it'll make you prostrate yourself. That's why I find, oh, that's why I can't understand, my God, when people don't come to the altar. Especially when I know God is moving, when I know the presence has manifested, my God. When you come in the presence of a holy God, it'll make you die. Mm. Oh, by she kid, I love ocean. Mm. My God. Mm. When you begin to mature and develop, you and I begin to see how unworthy and how far we are away from God. That happened to me sitting down there after I did the wedding. I got a long way to go, baby. I come a long way, but I still got a long way to go. The more you know, the more you're accountable for. The more, see, see, the more he give you, the more you're accountable for. See, you want more, you need more, but you ain't, you got to be accountable with more. You got to be responsible with more. Uh, You want a better job, but God, but you ain't faithful with the job that you get. Uh, you want a better car, but you don't clean the one you got. Uh, you want a better, mm, but you ain't loving him. Wait. Mm. <laughs> Pathway to more is striving to live a clean life. Are y'all with me? Part of living a clean life has to do with everything. It has to do with allowing the spirit of the living God to affect your life. Write this down. Did that first thought help anybody so far? So by y'all voice, are y'all telling me you are released pastor to move to the next one? 
What pastor does that? One that's concerned about you. I want God's agenda, which is you, more than my agenda. So if you say, no, pastor, go back, then I'll go back. But y'all said move forward, so I'm moving forward. Woo. See, that's way past y'all. See, that gotta, see, you got to be free in the pool pit. And you got to have God's agenda, minister, not mine. I want you to get it because you have a destination. I want you to receive it because you need more. Your more is not just natural. Your more is spiritual. And so, therefore, many of you have great destinies inside of you. Locked up inside of you. In order to get it, you're going to have to strive to live holy. Trust me, holiness still matters. And, re- and, re- and, and under- realize and understand that holiness has everything to do with God. And he uses us to execute his will. He uses us on earth to show his holiness. He uses your mouth. He uses your hands. He uses your feet, my God, to display to a dying world that don't know him his holiness. He showed his holiness to Moses, my God, and then the, Israel, uh, the Egyptians, because they didn't know God, and he did the ten plagues. And after that, he said, man, God, my God, after that, they began to know God, because God displayed his holiness through the ten plagues, through Moses. See, God uses you. Let me move. He uses you to display his holiness to a dying world. That's why you have to strive to be clean. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Okay, y'all got it. Number two. Pathway to honesty. That's definitely uncover to recover. Job said in 42.1, keep things in context, then Job replied to the Lord. Mm -hmm. Job replied to the Lord, I know that you can do anything and no one can stop you. See, some of your us need to adopt Job's mindset. You ask, who is this that questioned my wisdom with such arrogance? It is I. And I was talking about things I knew nothing about, Job said. Job was being honest with God. Things far too wonderful for me. You said, listen, I will speak. God said, I have some questions for you and you must answer them. Watch this now. Those who want more keep short accounts with the Lord. You have to do like Minister Tory Hook said many years ago at a man's encounter. You have to serve God with a mindset to give people a pass before they ever make a mistake. Especially when you first meet somebody. Already give them a pass. Already know that she or he going to disappoint you. Just give them a pass. So when it happens, because it's going to happen, anytime you're dealing with people, a offense is bound to come. That's Bible. So give them a pass. What am I saying? Pathway to more is, my God, if you, if, if you always remember everything people have done to you, <sighs> close is heaven. Yeah, Let me tell you why. Because what that does is it begins to develop a bitter root inside of you. Yeah. Remember I told y'all in point number one that we are the temple of the living God. And not to join ourselves with things, per se, that will contaminate us, okay? And so, therefore, you and I, I you have to keep a short a record, a short account, my God, with God, because you have to remember... My God, because of the blood and the sacrifice that he forgave me. He healed me. He was merciful to me. So I got to begin to show mercy to the next man, to the next woman. Because many of us, my God, can't receive more because we're too bound up internally. We got too many scars, too many wounds, too many bad images, my God. We got too many walls up, my God, that's keeping people and even God out of our life. Many of us in the body of Christ all around the country, my God, serve God from the outer court. They never make it to the holiness of holiness. Because when you get to the holiness of holiness, you got to let it go. You got to surrender. It becomes nevertheless not my will, but thy will be done. Yes to your will, God, and no to mine. Even if I don't understand your plan, I still got the eternal yes down in my soul. I got to listen to me. But you got to keep a short account. Many of us, my God, we got a black book. What everybody that said, I've done something that we didn't like. And we go more to that book than we do the book of life, which is the word of God. Uh, you call it your diary, but I call it your black book for an account. My, my, uh, for an account, because every time you see his name or her name, you get angry. 
Every time you think about him or her or that situation, you get angry. You will stop reading your Bible when you think about him or her or that because you're angry. Bitter root. Are you listening to me? And so, my God, God is trying to snatch that bitter root up, my God, because the pathway to holiness, the pathway, my God, to more, my God, consists of you letting go of things that would interfere with your destiny. God is trying to crush you and break you and I, my God, because that stuff right there can't go. That black book, some of you need to burn it. Some of you need to take it, my God, and have a witness from the church, my God, or whoever, my God, and my God, and light a fire. My God, dash it with gasoline and set it, oh, my God, hey, about she did, about, ah, my God, dash it with, alcohol, with, with gasoline and set it afire. Because it has many of us in prison. Many of us are stuck, my God, to the black book. Stuck, my God, you might not have a black book, but you got black images. Images is just as more powerful than you wrote it down, my God. You can't move forward, my God, because your images, my God, every time you try to pursue, every time you think you can, you tell yourself you can't because of the images. Oh, my God, many of us have made mistakes, my God, and every time we try to launch out, my God, uh, the devil reminds us of a mistake and we quit. So some of us might not have a black book, but we got images. And that's just as dangerous. You got to be honest. You got to be honest. You got to be honest. I know you're not on that phone while we're in church. Escort him out of here, Alan. Let's go. And then come back in the service after you ask God to forgive you. Let's give God a hand for the young man. It's okay. We train. He in a full fair conversation on the phone. But that's my son in the faith, so I love him. Let's give God a hand. That wasn't to hurt him. That was the teacher. Amen. See, what the children has lost, and I thank God, reverence for God's house. Because they don't see no reverence at your house. I know that ain't your case. But I'm just saying, if you love me, help me. Don't tell me you love me and you allow me to be in chaos and don't try to help me. Amen. Somebody give God a hand. Somebody give God a hand. Torment the devil. Oh my God. Oh, I know how to get it back, baby. I know how to get it back. I know how to get it back. Hey! Torment the devil. Mm. It's okay. I know that will be dealt with. <laughs> but that was sitting on the front. It's all good, though. It's never to crush you, it's to build you. So what I'm trying to say, keep a, keep, 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 keep a short account. Don't always uh, 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 remind God of everything people done to you. You think you don't know? Yeah. See, this is real sound biblical teaching. Because many of us is disqualifying ourselves for more, even though we ask for more. Because God's saying, you won't even give mercy. How do you expect me to give you some? Yeah. Jesus said in order for you to be forgiven, you got to forgive. See, see, we disqualify ourselves for more, spiritually and naturally, money, peace, whatever. Some of us, my God, ain't getting no peace because we won't give no peace. Oh. And when you, you got the soul, which you want back. I can't get hurt. If you want peace, you got to give peace. If you want love, you got to give love. If you want respect, you got to give respect. Come on, somebody. If you want financial increase, you got to give financial increase. If, it's called this, mm, the seed of reciprocity, baby. What you sow comes back to you. I say what you sow comes back to you. You want everything, but you won't give nothing. Mm. So, my God, if you want something, then sow it. Many of you want more money, but you won't give God what belongs to you. Some of you came to church, but you didn't give God your tithes. You didn't give God no seed. Some of you won't pass the bucket, not because you're giving online, not because you're texting to give, you just don't give. Because you don't believe that the principles work. Yeah. And so what you do, you constantly pray and ask God for more. And you never receive because the heavens are shut because you don't trust God. How can God trust you with more but you don't even trust him with little? How can God trust you with more but you ask for you won't even trust him with little? 
If you got a need, you ought to sow. Yeah, if you got a need, you ought to sow into it. If you want to see your kids delivered, sow into somebody else's kids. You want to see your marriage restored, sow into somebody else's marriage. Oh, my God, long as the earth remain, there'll be seed time and harvest time, baby, sowing and reaping. Oh, my God. So you got to be honest. Look what David says. He says in Psalms 51, 17, write this down. The sacrifice you desire is a broken spirit. We're talking about being honest. You would not reject a broken and repentant heart, oh, God. He won't reject it. No matter what we've done, y'all, God will not reject you and I as long as we come with a repentant heart. God loves you and I so much. I don't care what has happened in our lives. God loves you and I too much. He died. That's why we took communion. Because everything you and I would encounter, everything you and I have been through, God's blood has its covered. Everything is under the blood. What we tend to do, we tend to remove it from under the blood. Per se. Every pain, every hang up, every habit is under the blood. Period. But you got to give God an opportunity to work that. Here is another thing. The pathway to need more and want more and getting more, you got to be honest. How honest are you with yourself? When you open up the Constitution, that is a mirror to your soul. The Word of God will show you and I all of our mistakes. It will begin to help you and I dominate this earth. It's not a bunch of rules. The Constitution is to restrict you from enjoying life. Don't approach the kingdom like that. God's Bible, my God, will restrict you from killing yourself. From destroying your marriages, from destroying your kids. My God, come on somebody. So you have to understand, my God, that, that you have to be real with yourself. You really have to uncover to recover. See, when our God began to deal with me, I didn't blame nobody. It wasn't my wife's fault. Melvin, Melvin, when we did what we did, it wasn't, they, it wasn't my wife, it wasn't mama's fault. It wasn't because I was raised by a single mama with no, and, and no daddy. It was, it was, it was uh, I did what I did because I chose to do what I did. And therefore, I made the choice. I had to deal with the consequences of my choice. See, some of you can't get more because you won't be honest. Quit hiding behind religion. Quit hiding behind tongues. Quit hiding behind five-minute devotions. Quit hiding behind two-minute prayers. Quit coming down to the altar, my God, and playing and going through the motion when you know you ain't changing. Yeah. 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 Don't you know, my God, I remember yeah. Bishop, you come down to every, you can come down to every, I glad, keep coming to the altar, that's not what I'm saying. But you come down here every time, but if you're not coming down here with the mindset to sacrifice, the Bible says, let me teach you this, the altar in the Old Testament represents sacrifice. I'm coming to kill something. And so if you come down to the altar, you got to come with a mindset to sacrifice that which you are bringing to the altar. And so if you kill some, if you're going to pick up, oh, my God, Holy Ghost. So I bought my lamb. I bought my goat. I bought my bullock. I bought my pigeon. I, and, it, and I killed it. I killed it. And it's bleeding. It's bleeding. And I pick up the dead thing that I just killed and take it right back to my seat with me. So that's why it can't be always external movement. It can't be always external excitement. That's why I would tell you excitement would cost you your soul. Noise will confuse you and you think it's spiritual when it ain't nothing but flesh and emotionalism. To stimulate, my God, the enemy is always trying to stimulate us with excitement. If I could keep them excited. If I could keep them moving 100 miles an hour, they'll never take time to read. They'll never take time to pray. They'll never, my God, my God, do a self-examination. They'll never evaluate themselves. They'll never look at their motives. They'll never come face to face with me. My God, if I keep them excited, keep them going, keep them happy, keep them moving. The enemy, my God, is moving us 100 miles an hour. Ain't no transformation in the church. And we coming out here, my God, symbolically in the natural, my God, killing animals and picking up the dead animals and taking them right back to the seat with them. You got to be honest with yourself. Look at the condition of where you're at and be real with yourself. I'm not casting no stones on nobody, but you got to get honest. That's the only way you're going to recover is being real with yourself. Quit talking about it. That's hard. No, it ain't. It's truth. Accept it. Do something with it and push. I'm trying to help the church. Somebody give God a hand. God doesn't want us to hide behind a mask of hypocrisy. He wants us to be honest about our condition. Proverbs 28, 13, I mean, yeah, 28, 13 says, people who conceal, that means hide their sin, would never prosper. How you going to want more when King Solomon, the wisest man ever lived on earth, said, my God, that those who conceal their sins would not prosper. So you want more, 
but you can't possible because you're hiding. Yeah. You, you, you're hiding amongst the crowd. Sometimes God got to pick you out the crowd. See, see, you, 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 you ought to get to the point you be like, God, pick me out the crowd. Don't let me go to hell by way of the crowd. Don't let me hide my God behind the crowd. Don't let me stay wounded, my God, and invalid 38 years because I'm amongst the crowd. Oh, my God, my God, don't let me stay sick and die, my God, oh, my God, and suffer in silence. Come on, Minister Tedrick, Pastor, suffer in silence because I want to be amongst the crowd. Oh, my God, I, 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 I stay amongst the crowd. I stay amongst the noise. I be amongst all the activity, my God, because I don't want to deal with myself. It's too painful to get quiet. It's too painful to come face to face, my God, with a brazen altar, my God. It's too painful, my God, to deal with me, my God, and all my mistakes and all my failures, Lord. So I keep going. I keep going. I keep smoking. I keep drinking. I keep doing all that because I don't want to deal with me. Yeah, yeah, but you're steady yeah. telling God in prayer, God, I want more. Yeah. I want a better life. I want a better husband. I want a better wife. I want a better job. I want a better death. God said, no. Yeah. What do you do when God tell you no? God is telling some of us no because we're not striving to live a clean life. And we're not being honest even with God. Like he don't know. Mr. T, like he don't know. He sees it all, Sparkle. He knows it all. He know every condition in this church right now. He know every heart in this church right now. He know what you get ready to do when you leave church. He know when you're going to pull that up out the ass trade that's waiting out there. He know that you got that sitting on the counter. He know you're going to dial that number. You shouldn't be dialing. Yeah, he know that old sage on the hill, whatever they call it, is waiting. He know that you won't let her go. He know that you got your black book. Yeah. He know that you got those images. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to help the church because we need more, but we need more spiritually. We don't need more stuff. Some of us don't even need more money because we ain't faithful with the money we got. Yeah. 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 First lady said, boy, you don't need nothing. Don't ask me for nothing. You don't need nothing. <laughs> you got everything. Nope, you ain't getting it. Nope, I ain't buying it. I just got I nothing. Hey. Nope. I'm serious. Too much stuff. My daughter bought me a shirt, I don't know, a year or two ago, and I wore it. She said, you know how long he had that shirt? You, you real talk? I'm just saying. I'm guilty. I'm guilty. I keep it on a dollar. I'm guilty, dirty guys. Two years before I wore my baby bought that shirt thing about her daddy. When she went to Atlanta, I just put it on a week or so ago, whatever it was. Forgot I even had it. Closet's full of shoes. Dress shoes and tennis shoes. Too much stuff. I don't even Forgot even what Jordan I got. Don't even know the numbers of them. I'm being serious. I just stuff. Yes, that's right. Yeah, testify. Testify. Validating the message that God gives me. I preach what I live. That's why it's so real, because it ain't fake. God oh, help me, Lord. Don't hide your sins. Sins will cause you and I not to prosper. My God, uh, uh, but you got to confess. Well, after you confess, turn from, and then receive God's mercy. I want every one of us this afternoon to make sure that we confess, turn from, and then receive. Everything the Spirit of God just said is a process. Confess, 1 John 1 and 9, turn, and receive. Thank you, Mother. Process. You can't do one. You got to do all three. So don't come down here confessing, and you know you ain't turning. Because you turn in your mind before you ever turn in your body. Yeah, yeah. See, we'll come down and do all this, but you ain't turned in your mind. Your spirit ain't changed. I mean, turned. Your mind hasn't turned. Now, it's got one more we're going to get out of here. Honesty. Truth. It's the only way to recover is being truthful. It's tough. Dealing with self is tough. I told the class that what people say is hard is just truth. And when people don't want to be honest, when people don't want to change, when people don't want to be free, when people constantly want to hold grudges, when people want to keep a black book, when people want to justify, they abandon truth. Anytime you can't lay the phone down, 
Anytime you can't see her phone. Everybody got bank, different bank accounts because we justify because I don't want them taking my money from this child support. You got to clean up all that type of stuff. Got to clean up all you married them. You know you had it when you married them. Don't do that. I'm just saying, this is the type of stuff that we, we don't understand. Who my God, thank you for John Bavir that disqualifies us, Minister Cornell. Stuff, little foxes that destroy the vine. The little thing that we won't give attention to, the very thing that's keeping us from getting more, keeping us from receiving from God. God said, I can't move you forward because you're dishonest right here. You're dishonest over there. You won't do this. You won't do that. Oh my God. God. God said, I love you enough, my God. I'm willing to expose it. I teach my men. Exposure is good to those who are really trying to live, right? Exposure, my God. Valerie is not a bad thing. It's a good thing. I thank God for exposure. Boy, she do too, baby cold. My God. You need help. Juju. Mm, mm, mm. Somebody give God a hand. Who ready to be honest? Who want more? Who needs more? Okay. Yeah, this is good. I see. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Boy, God spoke to you, woman of God. Last one. You got holiness, honesty, and humility. This is one that we got to work our way to. I said we, I'm talking about me. <laughs> oh, my God. Pastor, tell you, look, watch this, Pastor. Verse 5 and 6 of this same scripture, Joel 41, I mean 42 says, five, I have only heard about you before. At this time, Job is speaking this. He didn't really know God at the level you thought he may have knew God. <laughs> you see what I'm trying to say? See, that's why you got to really get full context of the scripture. That's why it's good to study. That's why it's good to study. That's why it's good to study. Job said his own mouth. God, he said, okay, now I really understand what I'm dealing with. Watch this. Let me see it, say it again. I have only heard about you. Many people, even today, is only hearing about Christ. I promise you, when you really know God, as you were saying, a uh, 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 Christian, my God, when you've seen him heal, when you've seen him deliver, when you've seen him restore, when you've seen God move, when you have seen the promises, when you have seen the scriptures, when you have seen and witnessed the infallible word of God become alive in your life, you know him at a different level. You serve him at a different level. You respond to him in a different way. Oh, my God, you walk with him in a different way, my God. When you have seen and tasted the goodness of the Lord, my God, my God. Oh, my God, you walk, my God, upright, my God. You come in his presence, you bow down and humble yourself. When you have seen God move, when you know he's a way maker, Brandon, when you've seen him turning around, when he made death be still, they Shot you up five times like to kill you. God said, Death be still. It wasn't time for you to go. When you experience the power of God, when you've seen the hand of the Lord move in your life, my God, to make you worship God, it ought to make you serve God with more passion, with more love, and more gratefulness. Somebody give God a hand in the church, baby. Hey, thank you. Taste it. Pastor Teddy told y'all two weeks ago that God want to put his hands on you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He want to put his hands on you, Sparkle. Who think about what you didn't come through, girl? Think about what you had witnessed growing up. Who my God, Chavez ain't. Chavez ain't went through none of the stuff that you got to go through. Who my God, God got his hands on your life. Sparkle? Who my God, Naila? I want y'all to feel it, Pastor D. Think about the things you had to walk through, son, from the time you was born to present. And what you're going through now. God got his hands on you, my God. Just submit and surrender and let God work out his will in your life. If the devil wanted to kill you, God would have been and let him kill you a long time ago. Quit killing your dreams. Yeah. Look at them tears. Quit killing your passion. Yeah. Quit killing, killing your destiny. Quit letting the enemy rob you of peace. Oh Quit letting the enemy take your kids and your grandkids away from you. Yeah. My God, my God, my God. Quit giving over the stuff that belongs to you that God gave you. My God. Thank you, Lord. Taste and see that he's good. And then when you see that he didn't move, let him work in your life. Falling in love with Jesus. I know it's strange because people want to do church. I know I'm strange, baby, cold to a lot of them. I can't help it. I love God. He's been good to me. My God, Joe said, I have only heard about you before, but now I have seen you with my own eyes. Joe said, repentance, y'all. I take back, star, everything I said. And I sit in dust and ashes to show my repentance. I sit in dust and ashes to show my 
repentance. Satan was wrong. And his friends was wrong about Job. Mm -hmm. And the charges that they brought against Job was wrong. Here was his friends coming to console him, but they was wrong how they tried to comfort him. There are some people that you think trying to console you, but they're wrong in how they're trying to console you. They're telling you things, and because you're not dusty enough, you're not intimate enough with God, you believe in lies. You have accepted lies. Be careful who you allow to try to console you, y'all. Be careful who you allow to try to speak into your life when you're going through affliction, My, when you're going through pain. Oh, Joyce, I got to be careful who you allow to come because the enemy will send people to get amongst you when you're at your vulnerable and your ah, weakest time. Because he's come to take advantage of you. He comes to, my God, to rob you, my God. And the same people that you're drawing, you think you're drawing strength from, is robbing you. Frustrating you. But, but Joe. He, he, see, Job didn't know God. Ooh, thank you, Holy Ghost. I'm done. Job didn't know God personally, but Job knew God's ways. So, 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 because he knew God's ways and also that, my God, Job knew him. So he said, no, no, what y'all trying to say, I, I ain't done none of that. I ain't mishandled nobody. Job wasn't trying to say he ain't never sinned. But he not finna accept, oh, 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 shit, God, oh. He, he, he not finna accept what you trying to put on him. See, see, some of y'all have accepted, my God, what people have put on you. You have accepted what people have said about you. Oh, my God. And you have built an institution in your mind uh, behind what people have said to you. And it was a divine strategy of the enemy, my God, to imprison you, my God, to somebody else's perception. Some of you can't move forward because you're stuck behind somebody else's perception of you. Oh, my God. And the enemy has used some of your closest friends to imprison you. Ooh, this is heavy teaching today. Joe, friends, prejudged. As I told y'all, don't judge going on for Christ before it's time. The Bible says never judge a thing before it's time. We still in infancy. We just six years old. We ain't 20 years old. I can imagine how many disciples are going to be up in this church in 20 years if the Lord delay is coming. And I probably won't even be the pastor of it, but it's okay, my God. All the seed, my God, and all the things that have been watered in this church. We just six. We just six. Come on, dirty die. We still working. We still pushing. We still pressing. Quit believing. The things that people say, let me give you this one. I'm going to get out your way. One thing that the enemy didn't know, and I pulled this right here, what I'm supposed to say from John MacArthur. I love him. He says, in thinking, he could, see, he was wrong, Satan, because, why? you need to write this, because he was thinking he could destroy Job had, baby, real faith. When God took everything, I ain't going to mess with it. I'm going to come back and finish this. When he took everything, he thought it was going to break Job. But Job stood because he had real saving faith. Watch this. Watch this, y'all. And remember, at this time, he ain't never had a face-to-face -face with God. He was standing on the ways, the acts, the attributes of God. God ain't touched him. God hadn't put his hands on him. God just showed him his ways. He just revealed his character to him. And that was enough for the man of God to have saving faith in the midst of one of the greatest suffering in, in the world. Oh, my God. Satan thought he was going to make him curse God and die. But he didn't know Job had real faith. Oh, he was a general like you call me, Tina, in the army of the Lord. My God. Oh, my God. Do I got any generals in the church today, man? Let me give you this last one. Let me give you this last one. His friends was wrong in the charges they brought against him. Watch this. Job is at a point of humility to bring my point to a close. Job's at a point of humility. Job himself, my God, was wrong in the charges. I mean, Job, some friends himself was wrong in the charges that they had raised against God. I mean, Job, they was wrong, Job's friends, against the charges they raised against Job. They was wrong. They was wrong. I wonder how. I'm closing. Ooh, Janice, watch that. I wonder how many people that the enemy has sent into your camp to bring accusations. The Bible says Satan is the accuser of the brethren, trying to accuse you of stuff that ain't true. And if you keep jabbing long enough, 
and you keep listening to that stuff long enough, you keep lending your ear, that's why you can't be careful. Go all the way back to what I said at point number one. Quit joining with, quit living with, quit being in union with, quit being in harmony with, with people, my God, that the enemy has brought into your life. Don't you know the enemy could use somebody that you was partners with in the second grade, and they can become your fiercest enemy? They can become your Absalom? Come on, somebody. So you got to be careful. Yeah. Of those closest eye people that you allow in your circle yeah. that don't want you to have more, yeah. that want you to stay in mediocrity. Yeah. There's people that was envious and jealous and people left our church because God blessed us with a larger campus because they got poverty mentalities and they want to stay small so they can hide. <laughs> but she told me, those who was with you, going to be with you. Yeah. Those who ain't. I'm done. Job humbled, humbled himself before the plan of God, y'all, and the person of God. It was his plan. I mean, it was a plan he could not understand, y'all. You can't understand what you're going through. I can't understand some of the things I didn't have to experience. But soon as you receive a harvest, here come persecution. After God bless you, be prepared for the enemy to come and attack. And so Job humbled himself to the plan. He didn't know that God was the orchestrator of this persecution that he was going through. When Satan came up in heaven and had a board meeting up in heaven about Job. Board meeting. Job is down there attending his family, take care of business, and heaven is having a board meeting about him. As I taught y'all, there's a board meeting, I promise you. If it ain't going on now, it's on its way. I'm not trying to scare you. I'm trying to prepare you. Are you prepared for your board meeting? Are you prepared when God release? Oh, Barry, watch this. When God release the enemies of darkness, against you. Notice I said God so loud to say say God release for the purpose of development. Ooh, stay with me. For the purpose Lawanya of development. He released the enemy against Job. God gave the enemy permission to buffet his life. <laughs> what do you do when God is the orchestrator? Mm, mm, mm. Mm, mm. Job repented. He humbled himself. He yielded to the Lord anyway, even though he didn't understand what God was doing early on in the book of Job. He got up under God. Those who get more are those who humble themselves and yield, church, to God and what he's doing. You can see this truth worked out, church, and all the way through the Bible where Abraham and Moses and Elijah, even the disciples, had to humble themselves. The pathway in this pathway isn't easy, but it's the only pathway that leads to more. You have to strive for holiness. You have to be honest. We got to humble ourselves in order for God to give us more. Some of us don't need more stuff. Some of us really don't even need more money. We just need to be disciplined with the money that we already have. You need peace? Are you not doing one of these three points? You need strength? Is strength elusive to you right now? Is emotional healing feel elusive to you right now? My God, ah, you want God to bless that which you have put before him you want God to increase church that which you have put before him you want God to answer the prayers that you have prayed before him but are you doing these three things because God don't owe you nothing don't you know you can request things from God Pastor Tedrick we can out of pride and act like God got to bless us because we ask for it some of us need to ask God to forgive us because we have come to God in pride we all guilty of that Asking God for this like he's supposed to do that. 
He ain't got to do nothing for you and I, Brandon. This is a very unconditional altar call. But I need all of us to think about what have you came to God with, my God, not in humility, but out of pride. I demand that you do this. And then you have to get to the point like Job did and repent. And say, God, I'm sorry. I didn't know you like I thought I did. Humility is the pathway to more. Honesty is the pathway to more. Truth in the inward part is the pathway to more. So I'm going to ask you, because I know this is not everybody. Let's make our way to the altar so we can pray, so I can release y'all. If you need, and if you got to bring your children, you bring them to the altar as well. But it's time to be honest. It's time to be honest. Have you been honest in areas of our relationships? Are we being truthful? Are we being truthful? Children, I'm talking to you as well. Children, this is your altar call as well. Especially for those that understand. Is anybody outside of the covenant of God? This is your opportunity to reconnect. God already paid a price. God already, my God, gave his body, his blood for you and I so that you and I could be reconnected. None of us have to leave up out of her, my God. Not challenged and not changed. Today is your day. God loves you. God have need of thee. If you got to bring, I like what Dirty is doing. If you got to bring your whole family to the altar, fathers, be priests, prophets, and kings of your home. Don't sit there and you know your home is tore up. My God, this is the day that the Lord has made. Y'all come on in, baby. Y'all come on in. There's a lot of people behind y'all. Everybody come on in. My God, get ready, praise and worship team, our Christian or whoever. My God, we get ready to move the people. Oh, Thank you, Lord. We want. Today is the day.